Hi, everyone. I'm Mercedes from Rocky Nook. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we're here today with Jeff Carlson. His book on Luminar 4 is uh, just releasing now. The ebook is available now on our website, and the print book is coming soon. So, Jeff is going to show us around Luminar today, give us a little preview of that, tell you about what you can find in the book, and also is going to offer you a special discount on the Luminar book today. So, without further ado, you came here to see Jeff, so I will turn it over to him and we will take your questions at the end. So, go ahead and submit your questions at any time, and then at the end, we will ask Jeff whatever questions you have. So, Jeff, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. How is everybody? I can only speak for me, but I'm good. It looks <laughs> everybody yeah. says, yeah, I'm great, whatever. <laughs> We're all excited to see what you have to say today. Well, thank you. Thank you. So um, uh, as Mercedes said, uh, thank you, Mercedes. Uh, you know, the the book is out now. And um, if if you know who I am, I've written a lot of books. And I have to say, uh, and I know this sounds like a total salesy thing, but like this is one of the one of my most favorite projects I've worked on, partially because uh, Luminar is fairly new, it's exciting, it has some different approaches that it takes to photo editing, uh, but also like, and hopefully this comes through when you read the book, when I was writing it, like I, I had fun writing it. Uh, I actually had a reader ask me, um, they're like, so uh, what did Skylum say about some of the things that you criticized them about? And um, you know, it's like, well, you know, like everything was constructive criticism. And I think that, uh, you know, they will know what I'm talking about. And there, there are some areas that are, you know, uh, not as strong as others. And there are other areas that we'll talk about today that are just really strong and do things that other photo, app, photo editing applications don't do. So uh, with that, what, what I want to do today is just basically uh, give a quick introduction to what Luminar is. You can go to Skylum's website and you know see a lot of their tutorials and, and their marketing materials. Like you'll get a really good idea there. You can download um, a you know a, a, a like a 30-day trial version. I believe it's 30 days. And um, it's it's a really interesting alternative to the big guns, to Lightroom, to Photoshop. Um, and so that that was really one of the reasons why we decided to do a book on it, why Rocky Note came to me and, and we were like, what should we what should we cover? Because um, part of this story is uh, Adobe. We have to include Adobe because uh, you know several years ago, they went with a subscription model. And the subscription model, you know, you're paying monthly to use their programs. And, you know, I'll, I'll be straightforward. I have a Creative Cloud subscription because I write about uh, Lightroom and Photoshop and all of that too. Um, but for a lot of people, like, they just didn't want to do that. And that's totally fine. And so because of that, we saw this, this great explosion of um, like like a smaller photo ecosystem of apps, um, a, a lot on the Mac. There have been you know several on, under Windows for a long time, and it just gave oxygen to all these these other developers who you know had this opportunity to say, look, we can do a lot of this. We can you know be as good or better at photo editing, and we can you know charge uh, you know a, a flat fee for it, so someone can just buy it and not have to do the recurring uh, subscription. And at the time I thought that was just gonna be something that, you know, people would get upset about the subscription and then it would kind of go away and it really hasn't. And so, uh, you know, one of the reasons why we're here is because uh, there's this opportunity for a company like Skylum to really, you know, push hard and say, all right, we're gonna be, a you know a, a, a big alternative to the big guns and not only that we're going to do it in our own way and that's one of the things that i like about luminar so hey, sorry yeah. to interrupt you real quick your showing is just a small little thumbnail right now I so am. I don't know if you have your screen share on already but i think it's making you appear a little bit small i'm tiny here. i'm minimized yes that's that's a problem um how about let's switch and actually bring up Luminar. 
Now everything looks right. Thanks, Jeff. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just this tiny, little, tiny person in this big machine. Uh, so, so Luminar is, uh, as I said, it's a photo editor, and uh, everything is all encapsulated into this one window. Uh, it runs on the Mac. It runs under Windows. Um, and if you are familiar with, say, Photoshop, uh, you will notice a distinct lack of floating things. I almost said a word that I probably shouldn't say on a public webinar. Um, you know, you don't have floating palettes. You don't have uh, long legacy controls. You don't have like six ways to do one thing. Uh, so for somebody who is is not um, you know, experienced with photo editing, Luminar is perfect. You can jump right in. You can do a lot of, of, of you know, uh, basic adjustments, very obvious things that you don't have to like puzzle through. But at the same time, if you are experienced with photo editing, you can also be able to, um, uh, you know, dig deep into some of the more advanced features. So, uh, what we're going to do here after I turn on my do not disturb because uh, I forgot to do that. Um, a couple of things that I want to say, um, it, yes, it, it uh, edits photos and we'll cover that. Um, there's also a library to it. And um, th this is one of the, one of the areas where um, Luminar is not as strong as some other programs. It, it's not a full digital asset manager. Um, currently, it doesn't have uh, keywords and text search. Those are things that are going to be added later in this year. Um, but what I want to focus on here is if you want to have a photo library, or let's say you want to build a bunch of um, like, like you have, you have a project, like you just did a photo shoot and you have all these photos that you need to do something with. Um, you can load them into the library. And what I like about this is it's, it, it's all right there for you. You don't have to, it, if you remember older versions and in some applications, like you have to open each file individually and you, you know, you edit it and then you have to figure out, okay, where am I going to save it? Am I going to save it as a, as a, as a PSD file? Am I going to export it as a JPEG? And like everything is nice and central. And, um, you know, in, in my history of, of working, I, I love that. Um, I, I've, I've written about, you know, taking control of your digital photos and, and just, you know, not having to deal with that layer is, is, is a great convenience. So that's one option. Um, it also works really well as a plugin of your, um, you know, the, the, everything that you're that you're bringing into is in one central location. Well, you can really like the way Luminar does it. So you can basically, um, <clears throat> excuse me, you, and I, I can't remember where, <laughs> because I don't have it open here. Um, there's a way that you can basically say, edit this in, uh, Luminar and Luminar just appears in your photos window and you get all of Luminar. Like you don't have to run it as a separate application. Uh, you have all the controls, all the interface and you make your edits. And when you're done and you click this to the save button to save the edits, that saved version is still right there in your photos library and it's all non-destructive. So if you decide, oh, you know what? I, really don't like the direction that I took that, or I, you know, I made it black and white, but I kind of want to go back to the original. You can just revert back to that original. You're not, you're not giving up anything. Um, <clears throat> another great thing about this, this approach is um, if you look here on my, my uh, uh, Luminar library here, um, you'll see that I have different folders on my hard drive that are the source for some of, of the images here. But I also have like Luminar NAS and Luminar external SSD. These are folders that I created on a network attacks, attached storage. And I also have a, um, a, an external drive. And Luminar is really great about not getting confused about where things are. If the um, photos are not currently connected, like on this Luminar external SSD. Uh, that's okay. 
you know, you won't be able to edit them, but it's not like it's completely forgotten where they are, which is something that, you know, photos has not been great about in the past and other applications, you know, if it's not connected, it doesn't exist. And that's, that's not helpful at all. Um, you can also store uh, your images on a, you know, a Dropbox folder or Google Drive folder. Um, so you're taking advantage of being able to have network backups of, of the, you know, cloud backups of those things. Okay, so this is all, you know, sort of infrastructure. Uh, why I like Luminar's approach. Oh, one more thing. Let's say you do have one image that you want to uh, uh, bring in and you, you don't want to deal with the library. You don't want to deal with folders or anything like that. Um, there is the ability to just edit single image and it, it brings that in. And so, so you do have that sort of one-off flexibility. So, you know, e even though Luminar's library is not as robust as other things, it does a lot. And I don't think people give it credit enough for that. So I'll leave that right there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now let's talk about what makes Luminar different. Um, obviously, let's take this picture right here. Um, if we, we've opened this, this photo here, uh, we're gonna go to the edit panel. Now the edit panel over here on the right, and I'm hoping that uh, that shows up just clearly. Yep. Um, you have basically like these, these five categories of edits. You have essentials, you have creative edits, you have portrait edits, professional uh, edits, and then deprecated shows up occasionally if you have like an image that was opened in a previous version of, of uh, Luminar. Um, and, and these are all just different tools that allow you to do, uh, you know, your, your editing. Your, so for example, like let's take a look at the light edit. Um, sorry, the, <laughs> the light tool. Um, you'll see, you know, there are sliders here for color temperature, exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows. If you have done photo editing, um, pretty much any photo editing in the past, uh, these are familiar, but these are also things where, you know, you have to know what they do. You have to know what highlights does. You have to, you know, get an idea of, okay, well, exposure, for example, exposure will sort of blast light everywhere. Maybe you don't want that. Maybe you just want to, you know, adjust the whites, or maybe you, you want to adjust a, a tone curve. So all of that is there, and that's great. But let's take a step back and say, okay, what if you either don't know how to do all that or aren't as familiar with it? Um, what if you don't really want to, you know, go super deep on an image? I mean, this image here that I shot, uh, hopefully it it's coming through on the webinar. Um, it's dark. It's definitely underexposed. I deliberately shot it this way because I didn't want the sky to completely blow out to white. And because I shot this in raw, I knew that I would have some flexibility with that. Um, Luminar reads uh, raw files and um, one nice aspect of it is that unlike say Photoshop, Photoshop has to open a raw file and then develop it and then sort of create a version that you can then edit. And Luminar is smart enough to just say, oh, look, I know how to read raw images and we're just gonna edit it straight away. So, I have this image. I want to do something with it. I don't really want to spend a whole lot of time on it. Maybe I'm in a hurry. Maybe I just shot this and I want to, you know, post it to Instagram and say, wow, look at this, this amazing scene that I found. Um, this is where a lot of uh, Skylum's work over the past couple of years kicks in. So one ni nice thing about Luminar is it's got a lot of AI, uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence um, underpinnings. Uh, they've done a lot of work to basically have the application say, okay, I can recognize things in this scene, or I can recognize that, oh, this looks like a landscape image. Uh, 
It looks like there's probably a sky there. It looks like there's a foreground and a background. All sorts of these, these computations that help the application know what it's working with. So for example, let's go with AI Enhance. AI Enhance is like the one-stop make better slider, okay? Um, right now, I've done nothing to this image. And I just want to make it better. And all I have to do is go to AI Accent and just drag here. And, you know, I'm going to crank this up a little, little high and see what happens. Now, there are a lot of other programs that have like an auto button or maybe they have, uh, you know, something similar. And in the past, there have been somewhere like you click auto, you don't really know what you're getting. Or maybe you'll you'll click auto, you'll be like, oh, okay, well, that's kind of a good direction. Um, this AI accent, like, boom, this is a perfectly good, you know, I would print this and put it on my wall kind of image. And that took me, what, 15 seconds? Uh, probably longer because I was talking about it. Um, if I wanted to uh, enhance the sky, now, in this particular image, I don't know if, if it's going to do a whole lot, but what's important is that the uh, the software knows that that's a sky. And so when I click that, uh, yeah, actually, that kind of makes it a little more dramatic. Uh, these were all colors that were already there uh, in the image, in the sky. I haven't, uh, you know, added any purple. I haven't done anything like that. This is just, um, you know, what was there in the file. And Luminar has been able to pull that out uh, just with those two little sliders. And, you know, for a lot of people, especially like, like let's say you're using uh, uh, photos or using uh, Lightroom Classic or something like that, uh, you know, maybe you don't want to go into all of the, the, the different tools. Well, throw it into Luminar using the, the, the photos extension in photos hit AI accent and there you go. You've got a great picture. So um, what else? There are things like like uh, AI structure. If you're familiar with the, the clarity slider in other programs, um, it can get really crunchy, right? Like, like it, 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 it kind of boosts the contrast, boosts some of the local contrast. Uh, and, you know, the, the AI structure, it, it sees different things. This particular example isn't great for AI structure because one of the, the, the really great things about AI structure is if you have a person in this picture, um, when you would apply clarity to a, an image that had a person in it, well, clarity and people don't really go well together. Uh, you, you get all the accent on like every wrinkle and shadow and, you know, like the background might look great. It's, you know, nice and crisp and, and, and dramatic. And the person front just looks like they got, you know, run through a, a really bad filter or something. Um, AI structure is great because the software knows, part, part of the, the AI knows that, oh, there's a person there and I can see where their head is and I can kind of tell where their shoulders are. And so it'll apply the structure to the background without, uh, you know, totally destroying the person in the front. And that sort of leads to another thing that I want to mention briefly. When you have this, this AI stuff going on, traditionally uh, you would have to be the one who defines different areas. So in, in this picture, I know we're, we're sort of sticking on this example uh, for a little while, but um, it's, it's sort of a nice, easy block. Like in other applications, you might want to do something to the sky. And so you'd have to either mask out the sky, you'd have to, you know, create a mask for that, or maybe make like a, a, a gradient mask that would apply an edit just to that area. But with the AI, it just knows where that is and it does it. So it saves you a lot of time, which is also nice. Okay, let's go to another, another uh, example here. Uh, here is a portrait. Now, you may be a portrait photographer, you may not be a portrait photographer, but you probably take pictures of people. 
excuse me, and uh, you know, family pictures. I think it's probably safe to say that you always want a flattering version of people. Now, if you have dabbled with some other sort of uh, portrait specific uh, applications or tools, there are some that can really go crazy. Like, like you can make somebody look uh, plastic. You know, you're like, oh, I'm going to smooth the skin. Or, um, you know, if if you want to do it in a more traditional manner, you go to Photoshop and you build a whole bunch of layers and you blur a layer and you paint through some others. And, you know, it's, oh my, it, it's an ordeal. Let me just <laughs> tell you that. Um, so uh, let's walk through how this works. Okay. Um, in this case, I'm going to do just a little bit of, of, of manual tweaks here to make this picture better. Um, th this is uh, my friend Rob. Uh, and again, as you can tell, I, I underexposed this. Um, I, I tend to underexpose more often, um, I think mostly because I'm a little gun shy about, uh, you know, blowing out highlights and partially because I find that I'm a photographer who who knows what can be done later. So although yes, I should absolutely, you know, try to get it right in camera every time, there are some times when I know that okay, this if I, you know, if I lower my shutter speed or, you know, provide more exposure at the time, I will, you know, maybe make it too bright and so I know what I can do afterwards. So in this case, I'm just going to, um, I'm looking at some notes here. I'm gonna sort of drop the highlights here. I'm gonna increase the shadows. We're gonna just bring him, basically make him look a little, a little more, uh, a, a little better exposed. And these are in the, the essential light uh, edits. Now, let's go to the portrait tools. Uh, portrait tools, Again, these are AI based. And so they know that there's a person in this photo. And not just that there's a person, they know that this, this is a person and you can see his eyes. You can tell where his nose is, is uh, his lips, his teeth. Uh, you know, it, it, it knows what it's looking at. And based on that, it can do a lot of edits that normally you would have to mask on. And actually, in the, the most recent version, uh, Luminar 4.2, uh, they did a lot of under the hood work with uh, the AI for portraits. And, you know, what I'm doing here could also be applied to a picture that had like, you know, three people, four people. Uh, you could have somebody who's you know, sort of like their, their head is slightly turned away and it would still be able to know what you're doing. All right. So let's let's. Uh, blast through some of these these edits real quick. Um, the AI skin enhancer. Uh, this is basically like the let's make somebody's skin a little bit better. Okay, um, and again, uh, hopefully the the details coming through here on the webinar. Um, we can see you know he has perfectly fine skin, a little bit of aging, a little bit of weathering. Uh, that's you know like character, right? So we don't want to get rid of the character, but we want to make it a little more flattering. So I'm just going to drag this skin enhancer up a bit. All right. Now, a couple things to notice. And uh, I'm just going to do a before and after, right? So this is this is before all of the edits, uh, but you can still tell with the, uh, with the skin smoothing. Actually, I can turn it off here. Um, so this is before. This is after. Now, he looks a little better. It's a little more pleasing, a little more flattering. But super important here, you notice that he still has texture. Uh, he still has wrinkles. We're not trying to get rid of all of his wrinkles. Um, if, if you did want to do that, you could probably use like the, um, there's a clone and stamp tool. There's an erase tool. Um, you know, in, in some pictures you do want to get rid of specific things and you definitely have the ability to do that. But let me also point out, look at his mustache and his beard. Okay. 
the AI knows that that's facial hair. And it knows that if you're going to smooth things, you don't want to smooth the facial hair into this, you know, sort of gray brown smear, because that's like the first indication that, oh, this has been touched up, right? So, um, yeah, I find myself using AI skin enhancer even just a little bit when I'm doing portraits. And also, let me point out, you know, we're, we're here at 81. I can crank this up to 100. And, you know, he still looks human. He's not you know, this uh, plasticized robot. So, you know, it's it's useful, but it also is realistic. And that's, that's another thing that I like about Luminar's approach. They're not trying to, uh, you know, go overboard. There are certainly applications where, you know, you can go super crazy and, uh, you know, veer into the like, oh, well, this is my artistic rendering of Rob. It's like, no, 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 no. I just want a better picture of Rob. Now, we're going to next jump to the AI portrait enhancer. And this is where we can do more specific things. Face smoothing, that's that's great. Oh, I should probably also point out that, uh, you know, the the skin enhancing hasn't affected anything else. It hasn't affected his his shirt. Um, like Like it knows where the face is. Now, we can do other things. Like, let's say we want to enhance his eyes. Eyes are, are, are the thing, especially in portraits, that we look at. So I'm just going to drag the eye enhancer up. And what's that, what that's doing is it's adding a little bit of clarity, a little bit of contrast, um, and just making his eyes pop a little bit more. OK, so there's, there's uh, after, there's before. Um, we're not, you know, giving him like super bright cat eyes, uh, which is something that you'll see, um, <laughs> actually you probably see in, you know, some of uh, my old photos, uh, when I was trying to do it manually, you're like, oh, that we really need to bring out the lightness of the eyes. And then you look at it again, and you realize that no, 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 no. Uh, we, we need to stick with the human human aspects of it. Um, let's say we want to get rid of some dark circles. This is something that is, you know, we all have them uh, and it's it's not uh, smoothing them away, it's just minimizing them. And so what we've done here is just with those two things, we've you know drawn more attention to his eyes. Um, I think I want to add a little bit of face light. Face light um, is, I, I, I probably use face light in all my portraits to some degree because you want to just bring a little bit of attention to the face and you don't want to um, increase the exposure, which, uh, you know, increases everything. Or you may not want to increase like the whites value under the light tool because again, that it's not very targeted. But here, Luminar knows where the face is. Uh, let's see. I think we're going to improve his eyebrows just a little bit. Um, I'm not sure how best to 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 express this other than um, you know, Luminar is okay. This is my theory. Um, it, I've not actually spoken to Skylum or the developers about this. This is this is my inference. But uh, you know, w one of the things about portrait editing, like fashion editing, you know, is just that aspect of okay, how much do you edit somebody? How much do you retouch uh, before you know we're we're getting into uh, you know uh, unrealistic portrayals of people and you know. Like, like there, there's that whole realm. And with Luminar, I, I appreciate the fact that, you know, it, the approach here is we're going to make things a little bit better. We're going to make it really easy for you to do this. And we're not going to go completely overboard. Um, one example I'm going to show here, this photo isn't a good example, but there's this uh, Slim Face 2.0. Uh, and what this does is, this, you know, as it says, it, it slims his face. And you're like, whoa, hey, hang on. Like he was given that 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 head structure for a reason, you know. Um, however, where this comes into play is if you have shot a, um, a portrait of somebody, 
And let's say you're using a, a wider than usual lens, or maybe they're close to the camera, and you get that that distortion that's just from the lens where you know their head's just going to look a little bit bigger. Well, use a tool like that that can compensate for that and not you know make it look really out of out of order. Um, one other thing I want to point out here, uh, which drives me crazy, there's this spot. Got this little spot on the back of my uh, uh, the, my backdrop there, or maybe it was a bit of dust. Um, I can easily go into my canvas tools, go to the erase tool, and just touch that out. And the way Luminar does this is um, a little bit tricky, and this is something that that I cover in my book. Um, when it uses the erase tool or the clone and stamp tool, it actually uh, makes a copy of the image and puts it on a new layer. So if you're going to do any erasing, you want to do that sort of in, in your last step. And when I click erase, that spot is gone. And at least the first time I started working on this, this uh, image, um, like that spot just really drove me crazy. So here we have an edited, finished. There are, you know, of course, other things that I could do. Perhaps I want to, you know, increase the 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 shadow side of his um, of his his face. Um, you know, like like there's always more that you can do. But compared to the original, like that's a pretty good that's a pretty good job. And uh, you know, it took us what six minutes, seven minutes. Now. Speaking of time, let's say we have a bunch of photos that you shot during like a photo session. Um, and here, I'm just gonna throw some edits on here, some AI edits. I'm gonna increase the face light. Let's, uh, you know, enhance her eyes quite a bit. Uh, pretend that she has dark circles, that sort of thing. Um, lip session, okay. And I'm I'm you know doing this quickly and probably exaggerating these just because uh, we can so we can show a difference. Um, okay, I've I've edited my shot. I'm like, hey, I really like the way that turned out. Now I have a whole bunch of other images. If I go back to the library, oops. If I go back to the grid, excuse me. I have all these other images shot from the same session, and I could go and laboriously. Uh, you know, make those edits uh, on each one. But of course, we don't have to do that because we live in the modern age. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to select all of those. And I'm going to go to Image and Adjustments and Sync Adjustments. Now, you've probably seen this in other applications. You can copy and paste adjustments to different, different uh, images. But one thing I want to point out here is um, the the images, sorry, the edits that we just did were all portrait edits. And so the AI is looking at faces and it's looking for lips. Okay, for example, like 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 adding color and contrast to the lips. Well, in these pictures, uh, you know, her her lips are not in the same place, right? So if you wanted to uh, you know, do this manually, you would have to, you know, possibly uh, mask those lips uh, or, you know, maybe uh, do a layer that was only looking for red tones, you know, basically more laborious things. And here the AI says, okay, well, no, I, I know that I need to increase the, the eye enhancer. Um, and so I, I'm going to find the eyes and apply that to that section or I'm gonna increase the face light. Well, it would be really easy to just sort of copy and paste a mask from, from one layer to another, or one image to another. But, you know, that might mean that the, 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 the uh, face light, you know, is like shifted off to the side and then you'd have to move it over. Just, you know, lots of little things where you, you get to actually take advantage of the fact that the app is smart enough and that the app can do things that you don't have to deal with, which I think is, is pretty great.
Okay, um, so we've we've done that. Um, let me <laughs> really quickly. I want to show this this feature. Um, and I know that uh, I, I have some friends from Skylum uh, here. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, I want to talk about AI sky replacement. Now, believe me, I rolled my eyes pretty hard when this first came out because I was like, ah, oh. like I've done a lot of landscape photography. And part of that is like you go to a sunset or you get up really early for a sunrise and you shoot what's there. And some days it's great. Some days you get really lucky in the clouds and the sun and everything just works just right. And those, those are the pictures that you take home and you, you make prints of and you sell prints and what have you. And some days it doesn't quite work and that's okay. And so there's like, like that little purist in me that's like, like, oh, well, that's not the way it was on the day. So I can't just replace a sky like that would be that would be dishonest, right? Okay, well, need to sort of, you know, get off my high horse for a minute and realize that, okay, we are engaged in a creative art form. So let's take this, this picture as an example. Uh, I like this picture. Um, I really like the way the, the light is hitting the, the water down, like the wave down the lower left. Uh, the sky, there was, there was really no sky. Like it was a beautiful, uh, clear blue sky, which for photographers tends to be boring. So maybe I want to improve this, right, for, for creative means. Or maybe I'm a real estate photographer and I'm shooting a house or uh, a building and, you know, it doesn't really matter what the sky was at the time. You want to make a pleasing image that somebody is going to look at that and say, oh, I want to buy that place. That place looks great. And, or, you know, maybe you do come to a, a, a day like this and you got skunked by the sky. You had a really great time. It's always great to get out and shoot landscape photography, but it just wasn't what you were expecting. And so, you know, maybe you were there at another time that had a really great sky and you want to put that in. So here's how this works. And again, I know I'm banging on about the AI stuff, but um, it really is stuff that differentiates Luminar from a lot of the others. So we want to replace this sky. In the AI sky replacement tool, there are a bunch of skies that are just built in. And I'm going to do dramatic sky number two. Now, that's all I did, okay? I just picked that. That is pretty darn good. You'll notice that, uh, you know, you don't have like really weird haloing behind this lighthouse. The color is coming through the glass here. Um, you know, I didn't have to make a mask to separate the rocks or maybe, you know, uh, uh, paste the, the image in as a separate layer and then, uh, you know, erase the masking and all that. Like, like there's so much that I did not have to do. It almost seems too easy. Now, there's kind of the danger here in that uh, now the light doesn't really match the light in the photo. So you have to make sure that you're, you're picking images that match the same direction of light uh, as for your, for your sky that matches the rest of the image. Otherwise, you know, it looks really, I mean, I could do something like this and you'd be like, Oh, wow. Look at that. That looks not realistic at all. But then again, Hey, I'm being creative. Maybe I want to do that. But in this case, here's a, here's a, a sky that's pretty, uh, you know, it's, I don't want to say it's easy, because there's still a lot of a lot of this this outcropping and the building there, um, but you know, the sky was clear. The the app kind of had it easy to figure out where the sky was and and put a replacement in. So let's throw this at it. Now this is a picture that I have done a sky replacement for this manually, and it was a bear, because yes, we know where the sky is. But uh, the computer may not recognize, like, like, look at all these slats, like all these different areas behind it. Uh, you know, it would probably require 
us to do a lot of hand-drawn masking, uh, different layers, blah, 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 blah. All right. In this case, I'm going to load my own sky image. Let's see what happens. OK. That is pretty darn impressive, right? So um, we're, we're going to ignore the fact that the sun actually doesn't rise from that direction because, you know, we're, we're being dramatic here. Um, but it's done a really good job of figuring out, okay, yeah, yes, these, these slats, this, this um, uh, arbor is blocking the sky, um, but the AI has figured out where the sky is. I mean, you know, for example, like, look at this tree. Like little spindly branches. Can you imagine doing that by hand? No, no, you can't. You can, but don't. <laughs> now, uh, it's not perfect. Um, if you notice up here, there some of these slats right here have 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 been uh, uh, ignored because the the software wasn't exactly sure what to do about that. Well, we have settings that can fix that, so we can um, push this up a bit. Now, just this one slider, Sky Global. Is, is basically just telling it to reevaluate the scene and figure out if there's any areas where it should be pushed in. Uh-oh, but if we look over here, oh, it's kind of, you know, decided, that, well, maybe this post right here is part of the sky too. So we can close gaps and deal with that. Now, there's definitely like a, a bit of touch and go uh, in terms of finding the right balance. Like here, uh, we lost a little bit of detail on the top here, but it's still the same color and it's, you know, kind of amorphous and cloudy. So that doesn't really bother me a whole lot. Um, we can also do, we can relight the scene because obviously we've introduced a color that wasn't there in the first place. So if I relight the scene, then it becomes more uniform. Okay. Um, so, you know, I have to give them credit. I did roll my eyes pretty hard and then I started using it and um, like I, I was sold. I was very happy about it. Um, we are getting almost close to the Q and A time. Um, but I wanna show just another example or two. Um, this picture right here. Now I've talked, uh, so far I've talked about the AI stuff uh, and it's great. Um, there are also like lots of other tools, like, like lots of these other creative tools. Um, you can add sun rays that can be really terrible, but you can also make them look really good. Um, you know, and there are, there are things like you can add glow and film grain and there's, there's, you know, a, a lot of different possibilities here. Um, but let's go back when I'm just slightly on my high horse and I'm looking at this picture here. Um, I, I love this picture but it's a little green, it's a little blue. And quite honestly, the, so the, this is at um, a little town called Leavenworth in Washington. Uh, beautiful, beautiful place. Amazing in the fall. And the weekend that we were able to go up, eh, like the trees weren't quite there yet. Like they were starting, but I really wanted that like that like fall color. And in some areas I got it, uh, this, this here, it's the, the trees are just starting, right? Well, um, there are controls and tools in Luminar that really let you go deep into uh, being able to edit something like this. Um, I like to say that, that Luminar is deceptively deep. So all the stuff I've shown you so far is stuff you can do really quickly. But if you wanna sit down and really you know, dig into specific hues, or you want to, you know, just like do real targeted color, uh, it can absolutely do that too. And the way I'm gonna show that is sort of uh, backwards. There's this feature called Luminar Looks, and looks are like, uh, you know, presets, sort of. Um, and uh, if you'll notice, a little sales pitch here, um, this is a set called Rocky Nook Looks. Um, that uh, you can download from Skylum for free um, and add to 
uh, Luminar. It also comes with some skies and some textures. Uh, the, the link to that is in the back of the book. And what these do is these let you, you know, um, apply different looks. This is one that I created called Leavenworth Fall based on how I edited this image. All right. Now, that's more of what I had in mind. Now, to be honest, that's a little bit too much. Um, it's a little too saturated for my taste. Um, maybe it was like really late or I'd had too much coffee when I was first editing it. Um, and so I can just, I can bring back that looks uh, amount and sort of get it to where I want it to be. So, hey, you're like, oh, okay, well, great. It makes orange things more orange and yellow things more yellow, whatever. But let's go over and look at our tools. You'll see all these tools here are now lit up. And that's because when you apply a look, it's not just sort of stamping uh, you know, an edited version on top. It's moving all those sliders. So for example, I can go into color here. I can go to advanced settings and I can see that, oh, okay. So the oranges, uh, you know, I've, I've dropped the hue to make them a little more orange, uh, boosted the luminance, and I can say, you know, I, I think that's a little bit too much. So I can just come in and adjust those manually. And this will give you an idea of, you know, the type of, of you know, not finicky details, but, uh, you know, if, if you want to have a lot of control and you want to, you know, touch up really specific things, like all of that is there in Luminar as well. And even though I've sort of been uh, uh, deprecating about, um, you know, layers and masks, uh, those absolutely have their place. And Luminar does that too. In fact, you can have a mask for every tool if you want, or you could, uh, you know, ap apply a tool and you say, you know what, like for whatever reason, that is not, it, it doesn't give the punch that I wanted. So you can create a new layer and apply that tool again, sort of double up on it if you want. Um, so there's, there's, there's just a lot here that you can work with uh, without, you know, feeling like, like, oh, like it only does AI stuff. And so, you know, it's, it's only for beginners. It's like, well, if you, really know what you're doing, or if you read my book and you learn what you're what doing, because the book covers all the tools, um, lots of different, uh, you know, techniques. Um, there are several walkthroughs, et cetera. Um, part of it is to help you understand, okay, like, 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 why is it doing this? Why would you use, um, you know, remove color cast, for example, then you can, you can dig into those types of things. Let me make sure that I have my outline covered here. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. One last thing, and then I promise we'll jump to questions. Um, to sort of add on to that, okay. Here's a picture of my wife at that same uh, sunflower field. And uh, this was um, actually, this is a completely different day. Um, but this was a situation where, uh, you know, the sunflowers were out. Uh, the sun was going down. We were driving by, and we're like, "Oh, let's let's jump out and get some pictures, right?" Um, this, I, I I love this picture. Um, like like the look on her face is is that that sort of thoughtful yet. Come on, Jeff, are you done taking the picture uh, yet? That I'm sure some of you have seen many times. But what I want to show about this is this is not where it, where it began. This is the the end of the edit. This is where we started. This is not a very good picture. This is really underexposed because again, I wanted to uh, you know, not blow out the sky. Um, uh, if you can tell, I'm gonna do the, the sort of split. Um, you know, the, the skin on her neck is a little bit flushed because it was, it was hot. Um, and that's something that I you know, went in and, and corrected for. So I, I included this image in the book and, and the, there's a walkthrough of how I edited this uh, specifically because not necessarily because it's, you know, the best image I've ever taken, but it's 
an image that I like, that I wanted to make better, that I think, you know, in other circumstances I'd look at and go, eh, that's not really salvageable. And with Luminar, it absolutely was. So uh, I think that is what I have for right now. Um, Mercedes, do we have questions? Yes, yes. I know, I I know I'm running right against the, uh, uh, the edge here, but. Well, we can stay as long as you can okay. stay. <laughs> so when you're ready, you let me know. I have, um, I have a good amount of questions for you okay. already. If anyone else has more questions, go ahead and submit them now in the chat and we'll see if we can get to them. Um, before I get to the questions though, I want to let you know, um, this just came into us and I think it's really exciting for everyone to know about, uh, which is if, if you are going to buy Luminar 4 or if you are going to upgrade Luminar 3 to Luminar 4, uh, we have a special 20% off coupon code that you can use for that. And that code is Rocky20. So you, you can't buy Luminar from Rocky Nook. You have to buy Luminar from Skylum. But if you go there to either upgrade Luminar 3 or buy Luminar 4, apply the code Rocky20 at checkout and you will save 20%. So I thought that was really cool for Skylum to do it for us and everyone in this webinar. So I want to make sure everyone knows that. And we'll include that also in our email that goes out to you tomorrow with the replay link. So that's another thing I want to mention. Some people, a couple people had technical glitches during this. Um, so if you had a problem watching the webinar, you'll get a replay link tomorrow. Um, so you can watch this again at your convenience. Excellent. Yeah. So now with that kind of the bookkeeping out of the way, I'll get to it. <laughs> Uh, so what raw versions can Luminar read? Ah, that is a very good question that I do not have on the, off the top of my head. Um, I believe as of 4.2, anything that's on the market right now, it can read. I know that there was some lag with some um, like, like newer uh, Canon models, but I think that was the case with all photo developers. The, the, the crazy, and I'm going to say the stupid thing about RAW is that all the camera manufacturers have their own flavors and they change them for every single model. And so all the software developers have to update based on those, th those new definitions, basically. And sometimes they share them and sometimes they don't in a timely fashion, uh, they being the camera manufacturers. So I believe that um, anything on the market right now is supported. But I know that that um, if you go to Skylum's website, uh, they do have a page or they did have a page um, that basically breaks down that compatibility. Uh, what updates are you really excited about in Luminar 4? Oh, um, like, like uh, updates coming up, you think? Or don't know. Um, just something, I, I think the question, they weren't too specific, but I think it was between Luminar 3 and Luminar 4, what updates came? Oh, in? yeah. Um, oh, well, well, from 3 to 4 uh, was actually like a, a really big jump. Um, so it has some AI features you probably know um, that I've been <laughs> mentioning over and over again. Um, the the AI stuff is really good. Um, so that's that's been nice. Um, if you currently have three, one of the things I really like about four is just, um, you know, like, like it has performance improvements and it has, uh, you know, things like AI sky replacement. There's, there's a brand new one that came out with 4.2 called uh, AI sky uh, augmentation. I, I think I'm saying that wrong, but sorry, AI augmented sky, um, which lets you do, uh, you know, even more, sort of creative things. Um, so that's that's cool. Um, but like going from three to four, um, Skylum really did a lot of work sort of cleaning things out. Uh, before in, in version three, you had um, sort of filters for everything. And it, it was, it was innovative in that you could sort of pick and choose which things you wanted and put them into workspaces uh, that, you know, really, were tailored to the types of photos you wanted to do. Like, like if you never shoot portraits, you don't need any of the portrait tools. Um, but there was also a lot of redundancy. Like, you know, there were like three different ways that you could use, uh, you know, a change contrast, for example. And so, uh, you know, putting everything into this, this single sidebar and just centralizing a lot of stuff uh, just makes it, 
it's hard to express like 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 it's a breath of fresh air you know you you don't have to like spend 10% of your brain going all right now where was that thing do i have the right thing loaded like everything is consistent it, it's where it's at um i will also point out that the erase tool in i want to say version 4.1 was dramatically uh improved before it was okay um in fact i, I can even do like a really quick uh example of this um this picture right here when i zoom in um, there was this little bit of, of, um, you know, I, don't, I guess that's like little tree leaves or something that was, that was on her, her hat. Um, this was, uh, get back in there. Um, you know, this is like a really highly textured surface. Uh, and quite honestly, I threw the erase tool at it just to see what would happen. And, you know, it, it did this fantastic job. So, um, you know, for, for correcting things like that, um, for, uh, you know, getting rid of, of dust spots, uh, you know, I would like to say that I, you know, shoot everything super clean. And then I go and I find an example of something, you know, to use for an article or for the book. And, you know, I in increase the contrast and I see that, oh my, like my lens was filthy and I have to, you know, pick out all the different spots that are up in the sky. Uh, you know, it, it makes it, makes it uh, uh, really, really easy. Um, if if they were talking about like 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 stuff that's that's upcoming after the current version features that are that are upcoming, um, uh, there there are going to be improvements to the library module, and that's going to be something that that Skylum has said will come to versions three and four because with version three, like they really pushed adding the library module um, because prior to that, uh, Luminar was really just like a photo editor. And they, they, you know, were really gung ho on building a full d digital asset manager. Um, and here I'm speaking for me, not to them, but um, I think anecdotally and looking at other companies, like building a dam is hard. And I have a feeling that, you know, they, they, they introduced the library module and it does a lot of basic stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, to, to do a full, full digital asset manager is a lot of work. And I'm guessing that there was some sort of in internal calculation that said, okay, we could either, you know, build this out for X percentage of people who are going to really want it, or we can put more resources into the editing engine and the AI and all of that. So, um, and uh, as far as other things, um, I, I don't know what they have. I mean, when, when the book, literally the week before the book went to press, uh, I found out about uh, version 4.2 and the the AI, aug aug <laughs> AI augmented sky feature. Um, and we were able to, to you know, sneak that in uh, into the book before it went to press. Um, but, you know, they're working on stuff that that we don't know about. I've I've been you know fortunate to be involved in betas and and early releases. You know, talking with Skylum, um, but you know they've got a lot up their sleeves and uh, they're, they're you know they like to surprise things. So um, before I get to the next question, I just want to comment. A lot of people in the chat are asking if Luminar Four will work on their specific system. It, and what the specific system requirements are. I'm not going to ask you those questions. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know either. <laughs> so for people who have specific questions about will Luminar work on my device, I'm going to send you to Skylum's website where you can find all that information there. Um, yeah. But here's here's a question that you can't answer. Okay. If, if someone creates a custom look that includes an AI tool, will that tool adapt to whatever image they apply the look to? Yes, which is one of the cool things about it. Um, so you know, again, like like doing the um, the 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 syncing adjustments, um, it's it's great about you know again knowing oh okay this is a sky this is a a, a face uh, you know, those sorts of things. Um, so yeah yeah. Uh, so one of the things that I mentioned in my book is that um, I was also like 
not so gung ho on um, on looks, um, not for any like specific reason of, of how they're implemented, but just because like I've I've never really been like a preset person. Like I want to go in and I want to want to edit the way I want to edit. I I don't want to just you know take something from somebody else and 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 do their version of 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 my photo if that makes sense and the thing that that sort of opened my eyes was oh okay in in luminar the looks are basically automation so you know if you have a, a situation like i showed with the with um, the the girl and and the the long photo shoot um you know you you can sync those adjustments or uh you know you can basically build a look that does you know 90% of the things that you want for any portrait session or any uh you know landscape shot and then work from there so figuring out that that looks are are really automation and can make your life easier um in addition to you know yeah maybe you want you know, somebody else's look. Actually, I should, I should um, point out that uh, when I go here and we view our looks. Um, uh, so Skylum uh, used to have a product called Tonality, which was um, basically for, for doing black and white, like, like really sophisticated black and white photo editing. And they, they took all that and they turned them into a bunch of looks. So, you know, I could say like, I want to go to, uh, you know, here and, you know, apply a different, uh, you know, black and white uh, looks, for example. And that would give me, you know, certainly a look that someone else conceived of, but then I can also go in and, and edit those specific things too. Great. Um, people are asking if, uh, if you're in the portrait mode, can you work on one individual face? Can you apply portrait mode to all the faces? Can you talk a little bit more about that? If there's more than one person in a, in a portrait. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good, so what it will do is it, it will apply, uh, the, the portrait edits to everybody. Uh, so, so let's say we have three people and, um, yeah, I don't have an example here of three people. Um, and uh, that will just apply the same settings to each person. Um, but what you could do is, uh, so you could do that uh, and then create a new layer, hide your, your previous layer so you can see what you're doing. Um, apply, let's say a different portrait looks to like the person who's in the middle. And then you could mask out the other two people for that layer. So. Um, you know, it's, it doesn't have the ability to say, okay, I want to edit person one, person two, person three. But once you know how layers and masks work, um, you can basically sort of stack those different edits on top of each other. Great. Um, let's see, I only have a couple more for you here. Okay. Uh, one question is, can, can, can you sync Luminar with Apple Photos? Um, not really sync. So, so the, 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 the mechanism that Apple photos uses is this, this, uh, these editing extensions, and this is kind of a, a workaround that, that Apple has put in. Um, and uh, partially that's like, because, uh, images are sandboxed and, and Apple is specific on how apps work together. Um, and so you can't like, like say, you know, um, in Luminar, show me all of my Apple Photos images. Like th that's not possible. But you can start in Photos and say, I want to edit this image using Luminar's uh, uh, tools. Let's say I, I want to, you know, do a sky replacement on on this, or you know, use the portrait tools, which which Photos doesn't have, um, and then basically like open that in Luminar within Photos. Do your edits. And then those then just get saved into your library. Great. Yeah. Um, so is there anything else about the book that um, that you want everyone to know that that you didn't touch on in this that you think is important? Yeah. So um, I guess 
you know, again, I, I, I sort of went crazy on the, on the AI stuff, partially because it's, it's like really great to demo. It's a lot of fun to like show like, Oh, look, you know, bah, here it is. It's done. Um, but uh, you know, I also want to get across that, that one of the goals of the book was not just, you know, here's how Luminar does it. But um, I, I tried wherever possible to sort of explain, you know, uh, why you would want to do this or, and you know, how it's working. Like, for example, you know, personally, I think everybody should have a thorough understanding of the histogram. And I know there are a lot of people who are like, oh, God, histogram, the little like weird mountainy colory thing that makes no sense. Well, if you understand a histogram, your editing just uh, the, like like your ability to edit, I think, you know, goes up 50 percent just understanding that. And so, you know, I, I devote several pages to how it works, how Luminar uses the histogram. Um, and, you know, that that also translates to when you're shooting. If, if you understand how that works, you can shoot better photos, too. So things like that. Um, you know, I've, I've touched on uh, layers and masks and, you know, those are definitely uh, chapters to, to become familiar with because um, like it can be complicated uh, if you are just sort of like, you know, Hey, I'm just going to throw a layer here or a mask or what's, what's a stamped layer. Um, but, you know, once you grok how those things work together, it opens up a whole lot of possibilities and you can have many, many layers and you can have, you know, a, um, a mask for a layer. And you could also have like a tool that just has its own mask because you only want to like edit, you know, this one little aspect of color in this one little area of the image. Um, and then, uh, you know, then you realize that, Oh, well maybe like, like this, this picture here, um, one of the reasons, um, so not one of the reasons, one of the ways that, uh, I, I, I brightened her exposure was I created, uh, another mask and then, um, uh, used a lightened blend mode. And so when you understand blend modes and how layers work, like that does even more stuff that you can understand. And so, you know, uh, Luminar has a lot in it that um, if you want to, you know, dig in, uh, you'll be richly rewarded. If you don't, totally great. You can still make great images and, you know, edge your way in. Uh, but I, I tried as much as I could in 256 pages to, you know, uh, pack it with that sort of information that, you know, if you want to do something and, and you want to take it an extra level, then you can do that. Uh, chapter nine j just talks about advanced things. Um, and, and a couple of things like, for example, um, uh, if you're doing a sky replacement, but uh, you have like, like water reflected, it's not going to know that that's reflected water or the, that the water is reflected sky. And so, you know, with, with a little bit of uh, creative layers and, um, you know, some transformations, uh, you can make that look like your replacement sky is reflected in that area. So, you know, that kind of stuff. Great. Um, real quick, I just want to remind everyone about that uh, Luminar deal I mentioned earlier. So 20% off Luminar 4 with the code ROCKY20, just all one word, no space. And then also on Jeff's book on the Photographer's Guide to Luminar 4, you can save 40% off when you purchase it through rockynook.com with the code LUMINAR40. So that will be in, but I'll put both of those in the email that everyone's going to get tomorrow. So tomorrow everyone's going to get, everyone who registered for this webinar is going to get an email that includes a replay link. So you can watch this again at your convenience. And then the coupon code for the Luminar book and also the coupon code for buying Luminar 4 if you wish to do so. So I just want to say thank you to everyone for joining us. Um, Jeff, uh, one more thing. I'll just ask you if you want to take a minute to Anything you have coming up, anything you want to promote or mention, where can people find you on social oh, media? Yeah. Go ahead and tell everyone that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so uh, jeffcarlson.com, uh, I am I got to it early enough that uh, jeffcarlson.com is mine. Um, and that's pretty much uh, where you'll find, um, you know, links to articles. Um, I, I write 
a lot <laughs> for uh, uh, you know Creative Pro, MacWorld, DP Review, uh, all sorts of of different outlets. Um, uh, on Instagram, I'm at Jeff Carlson. So please come and and follow me and see some of the some of the the uh, images um, you know that that I'm editing here. Some that show up in the book. Um, uh, Twitter is also Jeff Carlson. Um, and Facebook, of course, uh, it's Jeff L. Carlson, uh, because Facebook, you know, um, <laughs> but yeah, um, other things that I'm working on, uh, I'm working on stuff for other publishers, uh, but, uh, <laughs> um, because we're all friends here, um, uh, I recently came out with, with a book called Take Control of Your Digital Photos, which is all about organizing. Um, and so um, it, the Take Control publishers, we've been friends with with Rocky Nook and Peach Pit, and the, the, there's a long history there of, of, of good people working together. Um, and I'm currently uh, updating a book on the Apple Watch. So, you know, uh, I'm a freelance writer. I do lots of things and uh, a freelance writer and a photographer. Um, up until recently, I led workshops. Uh, we'll see when those get started again. Um, but yeah, um, and, and also um, at jeffcarlson.com, uh, sign up for my newsletter. I promise it doesn't go out very often, um, but it gives me a chance to, you know, interact with people um, rather than just sort of like, you know, hey, is anybody out there? So uh, totally appreciate that. Great. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Jeff. I, a lot of people, I just want to tell you, a lot of people in the chat are saying that this was really helpful and it was really Good. cool to see Luminar in this way. So thank you for spending your afternoon with us and showing us around Luminar. Um, to everyone who joined us in the chat today, thank you so much for spending some time with us and checking this out. And Stay tuned for that email tomorrow with the replay and the coupon codes. And uh, hopefully we'll see you all again soon. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you very much. Should should I stay here and, and maybe uh, try to skim through some of the comments uh, and answer things quickly? Or should we just? Um, we, I, I, I think we got to most of them. I can send you the um, full question list. OK, yeah. You want to go great. back some questions in a blog post or something? We can do that, too. That would but, be great. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate it. Thanks for taking the time.